Welcome back to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to suggest that Valve Software might actually launch a new game. Yeah, not one with a three on the end, though. Come on, there's limits to even our bravery. <laughs> and theirs. Uh, this game is still a big one, though. The word is Counter-Strike 2 is real, and it could be coming very soon. It's very exciting news. It comes from veteran esports journalist Richard Lewis, who broke the news on his substack. Before we get into it, we should note, rumors and leaks about a new CSGO on the Source 2 engine have been around for years. Rumors Rumors like this are so common that sequel rumor memes are an institution in this community. Yeah, it's like that exhausted post irony meme where people get so <laughs> excited for it again, even though everyone knows it's bullshit. No, this time it's different. We can believe this one. There's more smoke than ever before, which not only has everyone buzzing about this long awaited sequel, good God, but also wondering how Valve will manage a transition from Counter-Strike Global Offensive to Counter-Strike 2. So here's where we're at. As Lewis noted, Counter-Strike 2 rumors got new life a few weeks ago when Valve showed off a new banner on the game's official Twitter account. Yeah, it didn't have any explanation either. It was just kind of updated. It's just this black background with Counter-Strike written in orange text. Nothing exciting, but it got people talking. And gosh, when you're crawling through the desert, you just need any drip of water. <laughs> ah, but Lawrence, then the plot thickened. Ah, thickened like, <laughs> like, like the sands of DE dust. Yes. <laughs> About a week ago, the Twitter account Gabe Follower, such a good name, noticed something strange. The latest NVIDIA drivers introduced support for unknown app executables called csgos2.exe and cs2.exe. As Gabe Follower put it, quote, why is the project is called Counter-Strike 2 and what are you cooking at CSGO? Mm, so is this really something or is it just another CSGO 2 rumor? Uh, well, Lewis dropped a bombshell. He wrote that Counter-Strike 2 is, in fact, real this time. How did he know? And it's right around the corner in his words. He quoted anonymous sources, quote, with a knowledge of the game's development, who confirmed that there's a new version of CSGO on the way and that it's been in development, quote, for some time. Uh, he said that the new game will probably be released under the working title Counter-Strike 2, and a beta could be released this month. Whoa! Hold on a minute. Any day, March? We're talking about March right wait, now? Wait. Counter Strike! It's a Counter Strike 2! <laughs> you don't want to be away from home when Counter Strike 2 shadow drops. You got to start grinding levels or whatever right away. So, <laughs> hey. If you don't want to be away from the moment, make sure to sign up for our sponsor, HelloFresh, and enjoy delicious, affordable meals at home. Lawrence, that was an amazing segue. Here's the ad read. Today's episode of Inside Games is sponsored by HelloFresh, which can save you time and money. With the cost of groceries going up, now is the perfect time to get started with HelloFresh. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout and up to 70% cheaper than dining at a restaurant. HelloFresh knows you're busy too. We got gaming to do. That's why they take care of the meal planning and prep freeing up extra time for your busy gaming schedule. With pre-portioned ingredients, foolproof recipes, and convenient doorstep delivery, HelloFresh makes it easy to get dinner on the table. 40 weekly recipes to choose from for all meal occasions, lifestyles, and preferences. There are also over 100 seasonal and convenience items. So you can take your pick from meals like soy glazed salmon, with rice or mushroom and chive risotto. Sign up for HelloFresh using our link in the description or simply go to hellofresh.com and use our easy to remember code POGINSIDEMAR60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Once you click, our description will actually update live to count up all the people who've bought it. So that's kind of cool, new tech. Once more, that's hellofresh.com code POGINSIDEMAR60 or just click our link in the description. Thank you very much, HelloFresh. All right, let's get back to that spicy Counter-Strike 2 info. Ooh, spicy, just like a HelloFresh meal. Um, <laughs> Richard Lewis went on to say that, according to sources, the development of the new Counter-Strike has been something of a priority for Valve's team, and it includes people who have overseen development of previous Counter-Strike iterations. That's why, according to sources, current issues with CSGO haven't been dealt with for a while. Oh, that's mm. why. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh huh. So that, uh, we have like, it. do we have Team Fortress Two Two in the works now? That why they haven't touched <laughs> that game in a decade? Jeez. Lewis quoted a source who said, "Quote: The big priority is getting this out and then polishing it, fixing any bugs, and bringing it up to the level people expect from CS." So it's not going to launch at the level people expect? No, well, of course not, Lawrence. You know that. Uh, it's going to be so <laughs> messy, man. Uh, 
But he also did provide a few details about this new game and its features, so some get excited about. Cool. Uh, the new CSGO will be on the Source 2 engine, and as such, it'll feature improved graphical fidelity. Sources also said the new game will feature 128 tick servers, which would bring it in line with the rival esports game Valorant. Feature will be likely available when the beta launches. Uh, that's double CSGO's current tick rate of 64. Uh, the tick rate being the amount of times per second the game server registers player actions like connecting shots or bomb plantings. Yes, you can't blame lag anymore. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? Of course you can. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> But yeah, the new CSGO will also include, finally, an improved matchmaking system. Jeez, yeah, the hope is that yeah. players won't need to use third-party pugging services anymore. Ugh. Sources also told Lewis that the game is, quote, about ready to go. Jeez. And that it has already been tested by a group of pro players who were secretly flown to Valve's headquarters in Seattle. We've been there, Lawrence, you and I. Yeah, that was that was an interesting trip, kind of otherworldly. Yeah. But uh, so that's cool for those esports pros. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. I guess until now that none of them leaked it, but maybe maybe that NDA was something fierce. Valve, if you're wondering, obviously has not commented on the story yet. <laughs> yeah, they'll probably just their, their comment will be when they shadow drop it, I guess. So, yeah, but that's to say that it's true. How much stock do we put into this story? You know, is this just another leak of a new Counter-Strike? Ooh, the answer is probably not. Uh, Lewis, who hosts the Esports Gospel podcast, has actually broken a lot of Counter-Strike news in the past mm -hmm. and always done so very diligently. And in 2015, he was actually the first to report that one of the leading professional CSGO teams at the time had purposefully thrown a match. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so he's actually got some credibility, uh, as he proved. And plus, the info from data miners like Gabe Follower also points to the fact that there definitely is something in the works. Yeah, so it could change between now and then, but who's to say? Beyond the elements of Lewis's report, though, we personally can theorize a few additional benefits of finally moving Counter-Strike to the Source 2 engine. Yeah, well, it's taking them forever. Uh, yeah. For starters, Counter-Strike could inherit the observation tools and esports integration from Dota 2, including in-engine match observation and uh, commentator overlays. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, I think, and probably drive a lot of uh, oh, yeah. maybe more legitimate viewership of Counter-Strike esports. <laughs> Uh, but that's a whole other matter. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, there's also the matter of developer tools. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is still supported by authoring tools like Hammer, which originally released back in 1998 for Half-Life 1. So updating the engine to Source 2 means more modern development tools, which would in turn make life easier for both Valve's developers and people who want to make content in the community. Ah, and speaking of additional content, CSGO is uh, more than a shooter. It's a full digital economy. We've actually reported on all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, rumors of a sequel have led to a lot of speculation about how Valve would manage the item ecosystem of CSGO when introducing a sequel. Basically, will all the skins from CSGO carry over to Counter-Strike 2? Yeah, that's a really fascinating topic. And as far as I can tell, a rather unprecedented one of migrating mm -hmm. like digital collections and economies into new services. When we consider the question, just speaking purely technically, it's probably way easier for Valve to just start fresh. But if items don't carry over, that would mean permanently splitting the player base between the new players who don't have any investment yet and want to start on the newest thing and old players that have spent a decade or more building out their collections. So if inventories do carry over to Counter-Strike 2, then Valve will have to maintain digital economies across two platforms. Uh, a new skin would have to have assets in both Counter-Strike Global Offensive and then Counter-Strike 2. Uh, that'd be really annoying to maintain, especially if you're introducing a sequel to make maintenance and asset creation easier. Or Counter-Strike 2 will just swoop in and kind of fully replace Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Like they could just swap out the engine and the backend tools, but the game and the inventory and theoretically the play styles all stay exactly the same, if that's even possible. They, they kind of did that with uh, Overwatch 2. Mm, yeah, they tried. They and, they and they carried over a lot of the skins that you had from Overwatch 1 to Overwatch 2, so sort of. Uh, so even if all of that were possible, Valve got tons of blowback in the past when they transitioned from Counter-Strike 1.6 to Source to Global Offensive. I remember this. Uh, yeah. People wanted to stick with 1.6, so forcing everybody to shift to a new game version would be very, very unpopular. <laughs> And like you said, it was pretty unpopular when Overwatch did it. Uh, uh -huh. It also seems like a not very Valve-y thing to do, to just kind of force everyone to... New Blizzard, yeah, they'll do that shit all day. But <laughs> Valve tends to be a little more like individual freedoms type mm -hmm. of thing. A little more, uh, what's the word? 
libertarian. Sure. I can't imagine that they would just take global offensive away. So yeah, the game's inventory is a really interesting sticking point. And, and honestly, it could be motivating a Counter-Strike 2 in another way as well. CSGO, like we alluded to, is one of the internet's scummiest dens of online and underage gambling. And the heat is turning up on those issues, specifically loot boxes in gaming. That's right, we've reported on this. And just this week, a court in Austria ruled that FIFA's loot boxes are in fact gambling and have to be labeled as such. That's just one example of many recent crackdowns on loot boxes and game monetization. CSGO specifically has been revealed as one of the most problematic games in this space by exposing tons of underage players to gambling mechanics and esports betting. People Make Games released an excellent report breaking the issue down last November if you want to learn more about that old thing. And we covered it too if you want more commentary. With government regulators finally tightening the reins on loot boxes, you can bet. Valve is counting the days until they finally land in regulators' crosshairs. I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet, but it always yeah. takes time for, for government agencies to kind of catch up. So, so yeah, um, maybe Valve is realizing that Global Offensive is so embedded with literal gambling that it could be a liability in the future. So they're launching a new game with a different system before regulators slap them with running a bootleg online casino. That way they at least have a new uh, line of business that is a little more like in line with what people expect to see now, just in case they have to shut Global Offensive down or change the way it operates. Just a thought. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, either way, it'll be fascinating to see how uh, Valve manages the whole transition and to observe whatever ripple effects it sends through CSGO's gray market. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing that makes this a little unique, is the uh, interoperability of its item systems and stuff. So, uh, but let's yank it all the way back to the top line of the story here. Do you think the rumor is real? And if so, what do you, Bruce, and you and the audience want from a Counter-Strike 2? I have really no stake in Counter-Strike anymore. I used to play it all the time, um, but Global Offensive sort of turned into a game that I just can't know life. Mm -hmm. So now I just don't play it all the time. Um, and it's, I think it's a fantastic video game. It's obviously spawned a hundred clones. I got to hand it to Valorant for pushing the model forward. Because Valorant is, is a direct ripoff of Counter-Strike Global Offensive with hero abilities. But uh, Riot did it really well. So they have uh, managed to push Valve into the corner, which by the way is very hard to do. Um, so I'm glad that they did that. Uh, because that's the whole point of capitalism is that competition is good. <laughs> so now Valve has to improve on this whole thing. And boy, am I, I, boy, do I hope you're right, Lawrence, that they get rid of that gray market and get rid of those loot boxes and all those, the ridiculous economy that they've got going on. Because I know we all shit on NFTs, but that's what they're doing. They're doing NFTs uh, and they're not even on a blockchain. <laughs> so they are only in their tiny little economy of Valve. So hopefully they have to change all that stuff. Um, and I, I also have a lot of faith in Valve. I think they can make fantastic video games when they are pushed to do so. So I'm really looking forward to playing Counter-Strike 2 as well. Uh, I mean, I agree with all of it. Yeah, I think the, I think the rumor's real. I don't think I don't think Lewis would report on this. He, he takes his integrity pretty seriously and has had the past decade to throw on stupid rumors if that's what he wanted to do. So I think this is all legit. Uh, and yeah, I, I feel like Counter-Strike has probably passed me by. <laughs> I feel like if it, yeah. if it has the matchmaking and you can just have like a, a zero IQ Call of Duty experience, but even then the typical like the typical rounds of Counter Strike, if you're just like twirling around like a moron and you get like shot in the first thirty seconds, you just sit there with your controller on your lap for the next five minutes. So that's not really <laughs> that kind of experience either. Yeah, it's just an interesting game type, and I don't know how you make it how you make it like really adaptable to people who just want to have a dumb time. Um, but yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head with the NFT thing. The way that they do Steam inventory means that they can they can read those items in multiple games if they want to, which is what NFTs were all about. But what's funny is even within the microcosm of Valve, you can identify why it's a liability to have to support in-game assets for one digital token of ownership across multiple platforms, multiple dev models. Like it just even in one small scenario proves why NFTs were dumb to begin with. Even Valve doesn't really probably want to deal with them that much. So they love selling them, but not maintaining them. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's really fun to think about. As far as like what I want from a Counter-Strike 2, <sighs> watching the international from inside Dota 2 was very cool. Like seeing the, the match play out under me and hearing the audience and hearing the commentators and seeing them like draw over the, the play field was super neat. I could see that being a really interesting way to kind of figure out Counter-Strike as a game more. 
because mm-hmm. when I played it, it just felt so arbitrary. You know, I'd crouch in a corner for three minutes. I'd like scratch my nose and that's exactly the time a dude would walk out and just shoot me in the face. And that's yeah. my Counter-Strike experience. So it'd be me yeah. raging and then playing Game Boy on the side while I'm dead. Uh, so who knows, maybe if like I can see matches in engine with commentators explaining what's happening, then the game's like magical chess layer will suddenly make sense to me instead of just being like two dudes hosing at each other until one lives. <laughs> Lawrence, for casuals like us, uh, what you're asking for is a longer time to kill. Um, that's basically what you want. And cause it's what I, it's what I want. Uh, I don't want to die with one shot to the head from uh, some counter-strike expert who's played 5,000 hours. That's not fun, yeah. but they're probably never going to do that. Cause that's, I feel like that's not even counter-strike it's at that not, point. Right. And they're just changing it, changing to something else. Um, so then you have to get the flow of the map. You got to get the rhythm. It's boy. Oh boy. Do I not want to do any of that with counter-strike? Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm back to quick champions with me then. Yeah, exactly. Hey, here's some patrons that have a lot of money tied up not only in inside games our patreon but in knife pngs <laughs> uh lord war christian morgan anderson cody jost and james bowser thanks for giving us your money but then also you may want to pull it out of the economy of uh, of valve now because you, you don't know what's going to happen to that let me tell you bruce my patrons just liquidated all of their gaben bucks <laughs> ryan Derberry, brian cosner tony varela and kyle heaton thank you for your steady investing hands an inside games buck is always going to maintain its value <laughs>